Welcome to Eyewitness Report, where we delve into the pictures and videos sent in by eyewitnesses about the activities in their neighborhood. I am Jomi Otaibi. On this edition of the program, we continue to explore developments in the aftermath of the flood crisis that wrecked communities for weeks. This time, we'll focus on Anambra, Delta, Rivers, and Kogi states. In one of the communities adversely affected by flooding in Anambra state, it's time to take stock. As flood recedes, the once displaced victims return to their homes from various camps to face the challenges of settling down. All these places, both rice, beans, gary, everything, soak into water. So it's a matter of kind of, don't know how we can do the situation again. All this, see the measurement of water here. What can I do now? I can't go farm, farm again. I can't do anything again. I just, if I can see help, uh, because I lost all my, no, I, I can't. I can't just stay there. It's, it's a millions of money of naira which I lost, which I don't know how we can. I can gain it back again. So it is the only God that I hope that God can do everything possible. <laughs> loss in our farmland everywhere the way flood sweep us we look forward to God for help because it's a very massive thing that happened this year and also we are looking for that government could come to our aid financially materially it's nothing to write home about we've not seen this kind I've been on 40, I've been 40 years on the planet Earth, but I've not seen this kind. We thank God for sustaining us during the flood. By His grace, it has uh, receded completely, and then um, we are picking up. Uh, services have resumed in almost all our churches that were affected. We are trying to start again because it's like um, starting over. It, it really devastated the diocese, our members. In fact, everything that has to do with this diocese was terribly affected by the flood. The Two of our churches we are completely destroyed. And then fence, some of the fences, like uh, this cathedral compound, the main entrance gate, the thing collapsed. And then um, part of the bishop's court, where I live, you know, was affected. And then um, some of the of our property have been affected. So the, the, the flood devastated us, you know, to a large extent. People have started uh, going back to their homes. Just a, a little fraction that are still remaining. As per relief material, I must state here that um, we are still waiting for the government up to now because we had about um, three IDP camps, you know, put up by the Dice of Obaru. One is here within this cathedral at Emmanuel uh, Castle of Refuge. We had one there and uh, some other places. So 
uh, concerning relief materials. We have not seen the face of the government at all levels. Uh, the relief materials that came to us were from uh, spirit uh, field uh, individuals, private uh, sectors like uh, Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. They, they assisted us. Uh, our Archbishop in this province, Most Reverend uh, Dr. Alexi Benzin, he assisted us. Our brother diocese, uh, that's on the, our mother diocese, that's on the Niger, they came. In fact, at the peak of this flood, and some other individuals uh, who wouldn't love their names mentioned on this platform, they, they really supported us. There's another need of a man is what? <laughs> so let's write about food. The next paragraph. We are greatly affected by the flood. The students spent one month at home and that's a period of four weeks. Uh, during that period, uh, we the communication with the students was breached, so there was no learning activities going on. And uh, then also was the period of admission. Some students coming for admission, they stayed at home. Some of them changed school, and it greatly affected us. You can see the level of the flood on the walls of the school. The entire school was submerged with the flood. The access road also was submerged. And then some of the facilities in the school compound, like the Lister over there, was submerged by the flood and uh, some books were also submerged in the flood there there were some damages and so the school lost a, a, a lot of items facilities within the school compound then also it had an if impact on the learning process of the students what they were supposed to learn in 12 weeks we are trying to merge everything within four weeks and it's becoming a problem though we are doing our best to see that we give our students the best the water has greatly receded and then my people are gradually coming back to their ancestral home and uh, just like you asked how we are picking 95 to 95 percent of my people are farmers and so we are already going back to our farms there is no time this is our farming season the moment the water receives we go into farm so we are gradually picking up there's nothing to wait there's nobody to wait for so whatever you have that is remaining you will begin from there. Let me appreciate God who has sustained us during this period. I also want to appreciate our governor, Professor Chukumasha Soludo. The government of Anambra State was of immense help to us during this trying time. How many? How many got it? They have not uploaded for us to know. Okay. Uh, but but the the Mekoko Foundation started from the oil. By the statistics we got from the governor's office and SEMA, we are aware that seven local governments are affected and you have about 41 internally displaced persons scattered in about 30, 41,000 internally displaced persons. We have developed a distribution profile uh, which we have shared with SEMA and is attached to our letter of donation which will be handed over to you. And I hereby receive all these donations on behalf of the good people of our So, here we are, Anambra, facing these emergencies and now, well, we try to grapple with it and I want to comment our officers, well, we did the bit that we had to do as a responsible government. But also others, non-governmental organizations, NEMA came, did their own bit, uh, non-governmental organizations, and now also the international organization. I want to appreciate everyone who has, one way or the other, responded to this major calamity. The Delta State Government announced the closure of IDP camps across the state as flooding recedes. The announcement came with a promise to compensate flood victims to enable them to restart their livelihoods when they return home.
however, a protest by some aggrieved persons in one of the IDP camps seems to have prompted the Delta State government to fulfill its promise to financially support the victims. <laughs> You saw them today, they were very happy when they received the pact given to them by the governor of the state. Governor directed that nobody should go home without starting at least a little business for him to start life again. And that's what we just did today. The, the, the faces of those persons who were in the camp were better than it were when they came to the camp. Because they felt when they were in the camp, they were suffering and thinking of how they would start life again. But the governor has added that good part of his goodwill to their life by giving them what we yeah, a footing that they will start from when they get home. We they share money, not only the money, self I be the main thing. I born for camp. I mean, I join the people were born for camp. They don't take any money from me. Waiting there, but they sweet me because say, since when this flood day, if they give us food, if they give us good treatment, we should that they happy. Everybody they happy, no, happy. Nobody don't complain. So they reach now, can carry the money, can go. Waiting, we not expect, we expect fifty k for issues person. So, buddy, they sweet me. Welcome back. Even though flooding has receded in Kogi State, some internally displaced persons at various designated camps are afraid of returning to their communities because of the wreckage done to their homes. 
This development comes as the state government takes delivery of drugs and medical kits from the World Health Organization to tackle post-flood health challenges in the affected communities. The reason why we are here is because the flood took us on our way and it flooded off our properties. And some of our house is lost inside the water, fell down. And since when we come here, at least they are helping us with little, little food, but it didn't reach us. Because in a room, each room from room one to seven, some of us are 50, 52, 53 inside a class with the children, children that didn't catch children, it's adults. But uh, when they bring this five, uh, this uh, five kilo of rice or 10 kilos of rice, they will give us like uh, six pieces to each, each room. Like that, maize and uh, beans to each, each room, six each of them. Calculate it to, to how we can be able to share within ourselves how the food can be able to reach us. To me, if government can help us to relocate around that place, so that they should build a quarters mm. for those flood victims like us, mm. those, most of us that our house get collapsed, mm. they should build a place for us so that we will relocate to that place. Then our former place, if government can assist us even to break down, to further place down. Mm. For some of us, some of us will just go to that new site and think claim their former burial place, mm. which is not good. So for the for solution to this thing to me, the, even the government can assist us to look for a place, a new site for us, so that we relocate to that place. We can do this. No, we love the game, sir. Ceremony. Yeah. yeah. You no, but we can do ceremony. Uh, we can't do. Don't worry. Uh, don't worry. Uh, no, don't worry. Mm -hmm. yes. So that this is ceremony, we find out what you have found out. Just give him this. On behalf of the World Representative in the country office, I present to you 90 the agency emergency health kits that are enough to treat 900,000 people in three months. This is our initial support to the flood disaster in Kogi State. Apart from homes that were destroyed and farmlands that were destroyed, 92 of our health facilities were also affected. Of these 92, 66 of them were partially destroyed where we have 26 that were completely submerged and almost completely also um, destroyed. Um, Right from the first week of uh, this flood, we quickly set up a flood rapid response team in the uh, Ministry of Health. And we, we also invited some of our partners that are, uh, that are uh, um, make programming in the area of health in Kogi State. So um, the Emergency Operations Center has been functional. We have had a number of um, medical persons intervene in the health, uh, intervene in the IDPs. About, eight, about 84 IDPs are present in Kogi State. 
some of them, you know, government established, a few of them uh, you, um, faith based organization, and some of them were people aggregating themselves, you know, within the vicinities of their homes that were destroyed. I've taken soccer to them uh, in terms of medical supplies, medical examination, including referrals. In River State, the people of Ogba, Egbema, and Doni local government area are also contending with post flood challenges as they return to their homes and farms after being displaced by flood for weeks. Channels Television returns to some of the flood ravaged communities to see how the returning IDPs are adjusting to life. government, so you have to get to me. I think. I want to go to work See, the water don't kill all our crops, plantain and cassava, then everything. The flood have killed all our crops, cassava and the plantain, cause damage inside our houses. So place inside our houses have cracked because of the pressure of the water. So at least we need assistance, we need help from anywhere at all. God will bless. Nothing or ten naira to God will create me ten naira shishi. Even in domi, nothing. They never give me anything. That's why I tell us to make no be domi. Because now suffer what they suffer. This water spoil many things for Kabokan. Even my farm. I didn't collect any one. And now we are suffering. No cassava. Nothing, nothing. Even cassava step now. We didn't see anyone to use plant again. Post uh, flood uh, mitigation to the people of Obebe Mandone, uh, we have provided about 25,000 uh, bundles of cassava stem. This is species STMD 419 you know, to the people, and it's a very good one. So soon we'll start to share from zone to zone. We have about six zones in Obebe Mandone. We have Omok, Ibru, Ndone, uh, so many, Egin, and Ebema. So we will start to share in earnest the, the first group that will come to begin to share about 7,500 7, to each group who will begin to start. Another farm implements will be given to the farmers so that they mitigate what they have suffered from the terrestrial flooding that affected us immensely. On behalf of the local government chairman of our local government, Honorable Vincent Joe JP, I present to you this cassava stem. 
That's the program for this week. We'll meet again same time next week. I'm Yomi Otaibi. <laughs>